Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, we're going to be asking the question, should I or should I not buy a cheap spray gun? And it's not just as easy as a yes or no answer. So the cheap spray gun I'm going to be using here is a Carmix spray gun. It's a 1.4mm fluid tip and needle on it. I'm putting that head to head against the Devilbus GTI Pro with the TE20 air cap on it. So this is a Hyundai Getz that I'm going to be putting base and clear coat on with the Carmix gun. And I'm just going to be showing you guys just a bit of clear coat for the Devilbus GTI Pro Lite TE20. Um, so it is going on quite thick with this gun as you can see. Um, there is a reason for that. Because it's red, uh, they don't really cover very well, so I sometimes leave my base coat a little bit thicker to um, give me better coverage. So that's a big part of the reason why it's going on quite so peely. But another half of the reason is the gun itself. Um, the reason I'm using uh, this car as a demonstration is because the car itself is a bit of a bunky old uh, little Hyundai gets. It's not exactly your everyday Range Rover or Lexus or anything like that. So, on to our clear coat. Um, so you're going to be seeing the Pro Light here, TE20, for clear coat. Straight away, you can see I'm able to move much quicker. I've got the gun a lot closer. The spray fan is much bigger. Okay, so um, settings I'm using on this gun here is wind that fan right open. Have that fluid needle about three and a half turns out, mainly being that the um, weather in my area is actually starting to warm up, so I'm opening that uh, fluid out a bit to allow a bit more paint on. And uh, pressure settings at around 25 psi, which is 1.5 to 1.7 bar approximately. And you can see I'm able to get over that bar quite quickly. And next up, I'll be going straight back over to that Hyundai Getz and. Um, swapping there back over to the car mix gun and my initial thoughts straight away were this car mix gun goes through twice as much paint um, it gets a very thick orange peel on for some reason you have to have that pressure really high to get it to actually spray half decent so that, as you saw on that regular that was about 40 psi which is I'm not, I was actually wondering whether or not the regulator was reading correctly but it was it's um, yeah, it just likes a higher pressure, this gun, um, and it just goes through a lot more paint. So, should you buy one of these guns? Answer being, if you're sort of doing something at home, and you're only going to use it once or twice a year, yeah, buy it, by all means. It's going to get paint onto a car. That's about all it's really going to do. If you're going to use it every day, if you're an apprentice and you don't have much money and you're looking at getting a spray gun, you think, well, five, six hundred dollars is a bit too much. I can't really afford a developers. And you just want to buy one of these cheap guns for, say, a hundred, hundred and fifty gun dollars, sorry. Um, I would say don't even think about it. Save your dollars and get a good one. If, you, if you're an apprentice and you want to stay spray painting for a long time, just get a quality spray gun that's going to last you because you're going to go through five of these and you'll never get good quality finishes. Well, you can get okay finishes with it, um, but at the end of the day, I just about did all I could with this um, gun and it got a very orange peely finish with it. It got a lot of uh, wastage and a lot of paint on that car too. And it, um, it was perfect for the car that it is. Um, it actually just about nailed the orange peel, to be honest, because um, the rest of the car had been done before and it had been done quite a thick orange peel on it but um yeah so I mean yeah if you're using it once or twice in a year go for it but I, I, I really wouldn't I wouldn't bother my t uh, time buying one I would never buy one of these spray guns um, the guy that I work with he's actually from India and when his wife came over from India he told me that he asked her to bring him a spray gun and I said hey bring it in because some of the guys um, want to see me using those kind of guns because not everyone has these $500 Devilbuses so I understand that and um, it, it really does uh, highlight um, what you pay for when you buy one of these expensive guns. You pay for quality, you pay for the finish that you get and don't forget that these Devilbus, um, the spray gun itself, the invention was actually invented by Dr. Devilbus. He, um, he was a doctor and he wanted something that was able to spray perfume on on women so that's a, and 
developers have got a long history in this trade. So um, that that Carmix gun, that's probably just um, some Chinese or Indian company that just downloaded some specs off of a, another generic spray gun and just decided to machine something up and just something that is just going to spray something out of the the um, the gun. So. Um, yeah, by no means is it a good quality spray gun. It's probably not even going to last. You know, you, you give it a couple of months, it'll probably, if used in a workshop environment, you give it a couple of months, it'll probably stop spraying. It'll probably start leaking out of the um, the fluid needles and uh, the packing glands, which it actually doesn't even have a packing gland, so it probably will start leaking and seizing up and stuff like that. Um, yeah, no good for a workshop environment, to be honest. I bought those cheap guns, just primer guns before, thinking, oh, you know, you save a, bit, a couple of dollars on a primer gun, and to be honest, they, they don't last. They just, um, you know, they start seizing up, the fan goes on them, and there's nothing you can do to them, and they're just rubbish. Put them in the bin type material. Um, yeah, whereas this, you can see, it's much more efficient. That's basically flat, but that's basically got no orange peel in it. Nothing that needs, nothing that's any bigger than factory anyway and um, it gets a real nice finish on. So back over to the red one and we'll be uh, putting our second coat of clear on. After that we'll be um, finishing the job off and we'll have a quick look at it outside. There's also a couple of other links at the very end and a uh, link to check out my channel. If you haven't already seen my channel, there's loads of other good videos, loads of different spray gun reviews I've also got a Facebook page, so you should check me out on Facebook if you haven't already. There's a link in the description of each one of my videos. I also post loads of photos up there, which are usually quite popular. So Be sure to hit that like button if you like what you see. Make sure you comment too. I always do my best to um, keep up with the comments and answer anyone's questions. So Feedback's welcome too. So yeah, this is on with the second coat um, with the fluid. I just had it wound right out um, with this gun. It just didn't feel like it had a great deal of pull on that trigger. So I wound, had it wound right out and it still didn't feel like I was pulling it in that far, to be honest. Um, yeah, fan wide open. And as you can see, it's a, it's a lot smaller of a fan to the other one. And yeah, just set, set it to 40 PSI. That, those pressure settings are going to change and the rest of the settings are going to change on which gun you've got obviously like um, no one told me I didn't read the box There's, there was no uh, guidelines given to me I just look at the gun and I just can figure out how it's meant to be used um, just from experience so um, experience tells me how to set the spray gun up that's about it um, I actually learnt to spray through feel I never used to I never got told any settings, how you meant to set the gun up. Um, I might have asked the tradesman a couple of questions here and there, but um, at the end of the day, you actually just got to have to watch the paint go on and see see what it's doing, and you, you know in your mind what, it, what you want it to do, um, and just trial and error. Get a few runs, you know, get a bit of dry spray, and then you just sort of know where you can push the limits of your paint, and um, yeah, you should be able to learn from your mistakes and start getting finishes that you're happy with. So, as you can see here, it's, it's definitely an acceptable uh, finish with that gun, you know, but it, as I said before, if that was a nice car, it wouldn't be acceptable and we would have to sand all of that orange peel out, polish it up, would have been a big job. But for the car, it is worked out quite perfectly. So, have a quick look at the car once it's outside and been washed up. After we have a look at that bumper bar. You can really see that that bar is much better, much nicer than the, the red one. And I'll probably use half the amount of paint in doing so. Here she is when it's all finished off. And you should be happy with their car when they get it back. It looks a million dollars. So, as I say, they do have their place, their cheap guns. Just more for the hobbyist. 
for the serious spray painter in the trade, probably get the expensive one. Check out these links if you haven't already seen them. Thanks again for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.